presentation, which is about the skill of effective revision. I hope that my experience as a student can help you guys out a little bit, combined with some research to find some of the best revision techniques and um, bits of revising that can help you to spend less time, but to spend it more effectively. So, first of all, let's talk about And why we revise. And yeah. Sorry, can you speak up? No. Okay. Can you speak um, and also just speak a little slowly. It's, it's coming a little, it's not coming very clear. Just speak up a bit, please. Okay. Can you hear me now, guys? Yes. Yes. Is that, is that clear? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. So the first thing is um, why do we revise? Um, it might seem obvious, but quite a lot of the time, if we don't know why we're revising, then you lack motivation and you don't get it done. So the skill of revision is not something how we to do. Um, however, it's extremely important because the entire education system, especially in England, is based upon exams. And if you don't know how to revise effectively, then that's not very good. So the first objective, I guess, of revision is it's recall, so factual recall. So it's key bits of information. For example, if you're doing a Spanish vocabulary test, then you remember the words. That's fairly simple. Um, the other objective is understanding, which means that to grasp the concepts involved. Um, is there something someone wanted to say? Okay, great. So to understand the key concepts involved, you, uh, you gain understanding, which will allow you to apply your knowledge to different situations if you revise effectively. From that, Hopefully you can gain some confidence and you'll be relaxed about your situation. So going into an exam, you wouldn't feel stressed if you revise properly. Um, and as a result of that, you should find that you have better exam scores, I guess. So that's why we revise. Um, let's take a look into the difference between revision and cramming. So on the left, I've got person A who has had a revision schedule, has covered each and every topic in detail and they're confident and relaxed about the exam. And you've got person B who has got the old textbook out. They've read it for about four hours straight over and over. They're very stressed. They do it last minute, often late at night and they get no sleep. So guys, who do you think is going to be more successful uh, in the exam. Should be quite obvious, but um, write your answers in the chat. Megan, give Okay. Um, Great, um, Mahul's got it. Revising is 100% going to be more effective each and every time than cramming. So please take note of the difference and try not to cram as much as possible. It's not very good for your well-being. So here's a summary of the difference between revising and cramming. Right, so cramming is often an intensive long slog at the material where you look at something over and over again and you desperately try to remember everything at once. Often it's a long course material, but you've decided to do it in one long revision session. And as you can imagine, not only is that very boring, but it's also very stressful. So really try to avoid cramming because not only is it gonna reduce your results, it's not very good for your well-being, whereas revision is 
very much an organized effort, quite often with a schedule, with various techniques. And if you revise well, then you'll have enough time to do whatever you want as well in your free time. So talking about cramming, you often find that you lose sleep. Um, so the National Sleep Foundation has produced some guidelines about what sort of sleep you should be getting. Um, quite often people don't do it, even without an exam, because they want to maximize their time in the day. But it's quite easy to underestimate just how much sleep we need, especially as young people, because even if you have more time in the day, you'll find that you'll be less productive if you don't sleep enough. So please, please, please um, prioritize sleep over like cramming and even studying for a long period of time because your sleep impacts everything. Um, there I've got some bullet points um, showing you some of the effects of a lack of sleep. So you can see that your sleep is going to affect sort of the factors that are going to change how well you do in the test. So sleep is very important, not only for your well-being, but also for revision. So let's go into some revision tips, um, the first of which is creating a revision timetable. That will give you some goals and some targets to work towards, which makes sure that you gradually finish all of your material and you have all bases covered. So for me, I found that when I was creating a revision timetable, it needed to be personalized to me and flexibility was key. So I left it quite loose and I just gave myself rough targets sort of every day that I wanted to reach because I didn't know exactly when I would be able to revise. So your revision timetable needs to be very personalized to yourself and what times of day that you know are free so that you can sit down and revise. Um, you need to think about splitting your revision into smaller topics. So you break down sort of a large, quite scary looking piece of course material and you give it smaller topics so that you can process that information. And on each day you would do a different topic and that would gradually cover the material. So it's quite effective. Um, it needs to be flexible because there's no point getting stressed about whether you're ahead of or behind your schedule because it happens to everyone, unfortunately. Like no matter how much you plan your entire day step by step, you might not be able to achieve that. And that brings me on to my next point is to be realistic. Like don't say that, I don't know, on a Sunday, uh, you're gonna revise for seven hours with a half an hour break. Be realistic and know your limits and tailor your revision timetable to that limit. So um, here's a little example. This is quite detailed. Like it, it sort of resembles a school timetable, but you can be as detailed or as loose as you want, as um, long as you hi, have Ange. an idea. Uh, and we are not able to see your screen for some reason. Your screen has disappeared. Okay. We saw the revision uh, timetable. We saw till that slide. Okay, I'll, I'll have a look why that is. Can you see that again, uh, yeah. guys? Yeah. Thanks, Ansh. Okay, sorry about that. Um, as I was saying, there's your revision timetable. You don't have to follow that one. It can be as loose or as detailed as you want, as long as you've got what you're going to be able to revise and it gradually covers your course material. So the next tip is to remove distractions. Now, this is a massive one like the easiest way to make your revision less effective is to have say a phone next to you and then you look at that every five minutes and you waste your time um, and it can leave you 
feeling quite annoyed at yourself. So try leaving your phone out of your room. Um, also, some people seem to like to listen to music. Um, while this can be calming or relaxing, you need to make sure it doesn't cross the line to being distracting. Quite often, um, music with lyrics can turn out to be um, more distracting than just simple laid back chilled out music. But as a general rule, I would say music isn't that effective, but if it makes you feel good, then I guess do that for yourself. But please bear in mind that phones and music are two of the biggest distractions. Another thing people love to do is um, study with friends. Now this can be very engaging, very fun, but if you have the wrong group of friends who you're just more likely to mess around with than revise, then probably don't go with them. Um, try and find someone disciplined. As well as that, even, even like a computer or something that you're supposed to be doing research in can become a device for distraction. So try as much as possible to remove these distractions from your room. Um, make sure wherever you're studying, it's a quiet and um, isolated place. Obviously, this can be quite difficult at home, um, but try as best you can, because it's very important. Um, the next step is um, distributive practice, which means that you spread out your revision sessions so that you don't study for too long at once. Whether that be within one day, you do say 25 minutes, a five minute break and then go again, or whether that be doing revision of a particular subject, say chemistry on Monday, not doing it on Tuesday and then doing it again on Wednesday. Um, that helps you to avoid getting burnt out and getting tired. And it can also help you to relearn material. Um, now, the Pomodoro technique, which is mentioned there, is scientifically proven to be very effective for our attention spans, because a lot of people seem to think that they can revise for two hours straight. And you might be doing that, but your productivity has just plummeted and you're not revising effectively. So you might as well take that small five minute break and then get back to it. But in the end, it is up to you how long you revise. If you can concentrate for longer, then continue, but make sure that your breaks are also longer. As a general rule, if you revise for like 60 minutes or longer, then take around a 20 minute break. So um, keep a good balance as well. Um, that's the objective of distributive practice um, because you don't just do everything in one session, you spread it out. You have time to do other things but you also cover the content. So let's get into some revision techniques, which I hope will be helpful according to my own experience. So the first thing you need to do is to create a revision resource which displays the material. Now, quite often you'll use your exercise book that you made notes in school. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, my exercise book is a complete and utter mess. Um, I've got loose sheets, I've got scribbled notes, I've got diagrams and maybe people doodling on my book. And in general, that's just, um, you can't really rely on it to revise because it's just not organized. So quite often what I've done is make revision notes at home from a range of sources and that condenses the information into exactly what I need, no more and no less. If you, if you summarize in your own words, it can help you to gain understanding from your own perspective rather than the teacher's perspective or the textbook's perspective. And that's why making notes is one of the most effective and probably well-known techniques out there. Another one which has been coming up is um, mind mapping, which involves creating a colorful and memorable diagram which represents how your thoughts are organized. So you start with a big idea in the middle, an entire topic, and each branch um, that spreads out, you split the topic up into smaller ones. And you gradually move down from themes into subpoints 
until you have a visual idea of how you're organizing your information. And it's really good for people who like to visualize or it's extremely effective if you want to engage yourself a bit more because notes might be a bit boring for you. Um, make sure that it's colorful, but don't spend like five hours trying to make it a piece of art because in the end it is for your revision. So don't worry too much about making it extremely aesthetic or artistic, but a mind map can also be effective. Um, another one that I've seen is placing post-it notes on the wall. Now, obviously, you can't fit an entire essay of information into a post-it note, but small little facts like formulae, like vocabulary words, it can be very good. Um, because, for example, if you have notes on your bedroom wall, every time you wake up and every time you go to bed, you're going to see that piece of information and it's probably because it's going to become ingrained in your memory. So post-it notes is something to try. I wouldn't do it for absolutely everything and I wouldn't rely on it on its own because you can't fit an entire course for a course of material into post-it notes. But for small bits of information that might be effective to display it. Um, and the last one is diagrams and flowcharts for the more analytic people out there, you can split things into a process and it gives you information in a structured way. So that can help you to learn things and to understand them in your own way. Um, the final one is the audio recording. Some people like the sound of their own voice. Some people like to talk to themselves and to explain things as if they're explaining to someone else. And listening to that can be quite effective for some people. But in the end, you need to find what works for you and use that predominantly. There's no single right answer for how to display your revision material. Now um, comes probably the most important part, which is active recall. This is so crucial and it's so easily missed out. So once you've created your, your revision resource, which so many people do, you can't just spend hours and hours looking at it over and over and expect to learn it you need to retain information in your memory by forcing yourself to retrieve that information. And that is what Active Recall is about. It's scientifically proven to be one of the most effective revision techniques. So it involves testing yourself without your notes, without your mind map, without your diagrams, and forcing yourself to try and see if you can remember that information to make it stick in your brain. And this works in the long term as well. So it's incredibly effective and incredibly important. So here's some of the science. Um, Purdue University, um, they took some students who had already learned some foreign vocabulary, um, some foreign language vocabulary, and they picked the students um, and they split them into groups. Some of them did no active recall, no testing, some of them repeatedly tested their vocabulary, but they stopped studying and some people did neither. And what they found is that the people who repeatedly tested were the most effective in learning that vocabulary. Um, you can see there the critical role of retrieval practice in consolidating learning. So repeated studying, repeatedly looking at something is just not effective, especially in the long term. So I'm going to break down some common revision techniques and I want you to answer in the chat whether you think it's active recall or it's passive recall. So um, let's start with the first one. Um, these are some flashcards that I made, quite simple. You have a question on one side and you have an answer on the other side. So you would look at that question and you would try to retrieve that information from your brain, um, from your memory rather rather than just looking at it. So what do you think, guys? Um, is that active or is that passive? Um, get the answers in the chat. OK. Uh, Mahu is on it again. 
that is an example of active recall and that is why flashcards are almost famous for being the most effective or one of the most effective revision techniques because not only have I got my information right there, I'm also forcing myself to remember it without looking at it. And if you repeatedly do this, then your brain just picks it up and absorbs that information in such an effective way. So I would recommend trying out flashcards. The only thing is that they take quite long to make. So you do have to have a bit of patience and probably do it a good few weeks before a test or exam. So the next one is Uh, it's timing yourself um, and you explain something to someone else without notes and you try to explain it as fluently as possible for a given amount of time in order to check your understanding. Um, do you think that is active or passive? Okay, um, we have got three answers of passive. I'd just like to stress again when I'm explaining, um, it's without your notes. So you are doing it from your memory. Okay, Mahu has um, got it right again. It is active. Um, and surprisingly enough, this is also an effective technique. If you like talking, if you like explaining, then this could be a very good technique for you. So for example, you could go up to your parents and in one minute you summarize what happened in the battle of Hastings. And every time that you paused or you forgot something, then you would try again. And you would just repeat this until it just sticks in your memory. Um, so I'd recommend trying this technique out. Um, I know that was a bit misleading, but let's move on to the next one. Ah, the classic. Uh, you see it in every movie. You have the kid who has his textbook out and you read your notes and you highlight them. Um, that is it. Active or passive, guys. Yep, yeah, it looks like you guys have all got it right this time. That is passive recall. And unfortunately, one of the favorite revision techniques of all time is scientifically proven not to be very effective. It can be quite comforting, I guess, to just highlight your notes and to read them because it feels like you've understood them because you can see the notes on the page the entire time. So you get tricked into this illusion that you remember it when you don't have your notes. And unfortunately, sometimes that can't happen. So I'll be going into detail later how to change this technique to make it active recall and to make it more effective for yourself. Um, the next one is doing practice exams and past papers in timed conditions um, and also in exam conditions, which means that you do it closed book. Let's have a look at your answers. Good, I think you guys are getting the idea now. That is active and it's also one of the favorite techniques of all time to do the practice questions. Quite often, the exact same style of question can come in, in in an exam as it was in a past paper. So this is a great way to revise and to make sure that what you're doing is actually targeted towards an, towards an exam. So I would thoroughly recommend this as well. Um, yeah. The next one is you make your mind map, but all you do is stare at it and you reread it. What do you guys think? Okay, you guys are um, lightning fast and also completely correct. It's good to see that there's, there's, there's quite a lot of understanding here. This is passive again, unfortunately. 
a mind map might seem like a very creative way to revise, but if you just reread it, then you're reducing the effectiveness of that resource by so much. So um, the final one is sticking your post-it notes on the walls, um, which you see sporadically through the day. Um, what do you think? Yes. Um, this is passive once again. However, I still think it's effective um, because you're forcing yourself to see this information over and over again. And because it's such a small piece of information, if you do see it, say, 50 times in 50 days, then it is going to get lodged into your brain. Yes, Assad, subliminal messages, quite literally. Just seeing it for a few seconds that, I don't know, uh, moles is equal to mass over relative formula mass. It, it ingrains in your brain. So for small bits of information, I would still recommend post-it notes, even though it is passive. Um, to make an active, or to make a passive uh, revision resource active, you could wait for a day, and then you could make the resource again. So for example, you make your mind map, you read through it a few times, fine. Then you wait, say, 24 to 48 hours, so you have enough time to almost forget it, and then you make it again from memory, and see how much you made. Because there will 100% on the first attempt, there will be bits of the mind map that you did not remember. And those are the bits that you can then target with other techniques, for example, post-it notes, flashcards, practice exam questions. And that way you'll cover any gaps in your understanding while also constantly forcing yourself to retrieve that information. So here's my general formula from my experience and also from research. So you have your very own revision resource, you apply active recall, and then you get into the past exam questions. And you'll find that this, this technique has worked very well for me. Um, yes, mnemonics for certain things are effective. Um, they're not like the top of the list, but for some things, for example, I was doing the Spanish subjunctive as, uh, the other day, and just having a simple word um, to remember all of it was so useful. Um, but obviously, each letter of the mnemonic only has one word. So it can't explain everything, if that makes sense, but it gives you a summary of what you're looking for. I think, I think the famous one was one with history, something about Richard of York. Um, quite a lot of people enjoyed using that. Uh, yeah, Assad has nailed that as well. Um, if you have 45 mnemonics of different words, then it will be confusing. For a few small things, for a, for a few simple things um, where you want to remember singular words which you can associate to bits of information, it can be useful. Um, but thanks for asking that question. I think mnemonics are one that I didn't think about, but a lot of people use. Um, and one more thing is regular exercise. Now, it will shock you, but regular exercise uh, corresponds to better revision. It's that simple. Um, through exercise, uh, you will cause chemical ch changes in your brain, which can help to positively change your mood, which means that you're releasing endorphins, which improve your mood, which will reduce your stress, and it will overall make you a much more motivated person in, in the time after you exercise, to then go and revise. Um, I guess exercise is an important part of all lifestyles, so it will also affect your revision. So if you ever want a creative way to take a break, which doesn't involve going on your phone, then I would recommend exercise. It can be as rigorous or as simple as you want, as long as you get your heart pumping, as long as you get those endorphins circulating. And this can be so helpful, especially if you're feeling anxious or stressed, just to exercise, to let it all out. Um, and it's something I would thoroughly recommend to, to improve your well-being.
I know, Mahu, it's a, it's a massive shock. Physical health affects mental health and mental health affects your physical health. Your body and your mind are so intrinsically linked that exercise can help revision. So you, you, you actually find that your concentration is boosted. Um, that pretty much brings me to the end. Um, if you have questions, I'm sure you have a few, then please either you can speak them or you can put them in the chat, I don't mind. Um, I hope this was helpful. And yeah, that's, that's what I have to say on revision. Ah, I predominantly use the flashcards plus notes method. So I, if I have a topic that I struggled with in class, I make the notes. Then from my own notes, I make flashcards and I repeatedly go through flashcards over and over again because I'm constantly testing myself. And then sometimes I also rewrite my notes without looking at them, which can be a good way to incorporate active recall. And then if I have time at the end of that, then I will go through some exam questions and attempt them. Uh, that is my main revision technique. Don't take it as the gospel. Um, please be creative and find what works best for you. Excellent, Ange. Lovely session. And I think like me, everyone else was as captivated with the session. Some of the things that I particularly enjoyed was your sleep guidelines. And that was very helpful. And also I see a lot of children having timetables for their work and around their subject matter, but having a timetable for revision was again yeah. something that was very clever. Mm -hmm. so, well done, Ange. So now I'm uh, opening up the question and answer session, uh, guys. Can you please type your questions and uh, that you have for Ange? Yeah. Uh Ask anything, I guess. Okay, we already have one question for you, Ange. Oh yeah, um, I answered that. Uh, oh, here we go, Mahul. What is wrong with using ready-made notepads from the internet? Um, quite often, your school and another school can cover uh, topics with different levels of detail. So if, if you found a note card website, for example, Quizlet, quite a lot of them are either studying different curriculums, different exam boards, or possibly in completely different countries. Like the majority of people on Quizlet are American. So you'll find that ready-made note cards aren't that effective. And I think the whole point of making your own revision resource is so that you understand it for yourself. Um, so I would recommend making your own, but I guess if you want to incorporate active recall and you don't have the time, then use ready-made note cards. How do I know which revision method is best for each subject? Well, um, I would say, math, you're not exactly going to make revision notes about math. The most common thing to do is to, to practice questions, and maybe you'll have a few post-it notes before me. But then for things like languages, foreign languages, um, you'll find that a lot of it is just vocabulary. So you can just use flashcards. Um, I love using Quizlet Learn for um, my revision of vocabulary. But then for humanities and for sciences, you can pretty much do anything that you want because those topics are quite broad and they have a wide range of things that you need to do. It's not simple logic or simple recall, it's a range of things. So whatever works for you, um, I would say is good. Is it better to do revision notes by hand or on a computer, or does it not make any difference? Um, I found for me personally, when I, I fractured my wrist, right? I fractured my right wrist for the last four weeks, and I've been making notes on the computer. And every single time I was just doubting myself, and I was thinking, am I really remembering this? I found that for me personally, writing is very effective. That might be because I've written for like the last 12 years of my life, all of my notes. 
for the last 15 years. Um, so for me personally, that works. But um, computer-made notes can also be effective. So however much of a difference it makes to you is what matters, I would say. Uh, yes, 100%. In some subjects, it's all about factual recall, and in others, you need to understand the topic. For example, biology, chemistry, physics, you can't really get away with memorising. Uh, you need to understand. So, to understand the concept, um, I would say YouTube videos, um, maybe very hyped a little bit, but extremely effective as like a first dip into revision just to watch the video and to understand and then after that make your own notes to understand the concept so I found making notes is 100% the best method um, and then for data related things I would say question answer so flashcards um, there's, there's quite a lot of software for learning for example Quizlet as I was mentioning earlier but for understanding I would say notes flash flashcards, mind maps, and anything which displays your information is so important. And um, make sure you put it in your own words. Like, don't copy it down from someone else, otherwise you won't understand. Would you recommend listening to podcasts? I haven't tried it myself. Um, I'll be very, very honest. Um, but if you find you're an audio-based learner, then yes. Um, it would be a great thing, I can imagine, if, for example, you're on the way back from school and you just listen to that podcast, um, just to refresh your memory. But I would certainly not rely on podcasts as like your primary method of doing it. Um, what other resources would you recommend other than Quizlet? Well, um, I mean, you've got all of your textbooks, obviously, which have practice questions at the end. Um, I would advise going on your specification and literally going through and ticking off every single topic on there. Um, there's also a website for teachers called um, ces.com. And I found that quite a lot of the teachers actually get their sheets from there. You can create a free account um, and there are literally thousands of free resources, sheets, practice questions, exam papers, anything on um, TES, um, which is extremely useful. I'll send the link right now, guys. Um, Dr. Frost Math, yeah, they have um, they have PowerPoints and they have practice questions as well, so that's good to recommend. How should one deal with the stress in the exam? Well, um, everyone has a different coping method. Um, being around other people and sharing your anxiety and stress with them is extremely important. But also, if if you've revised properly, then you can take consolation in that and you have every right to be confident in yourself if you've revised already now obviously there will always be some degree of stress when you're going into an exam but as long as that stress is only helping you to go forward rather than making you anxious and nervous um then i guess it's the right kind of stress if that makes sense what should one do on the last day before the exam should they revise or should they take it easy I would lean towards the side of take it easy. It's, um, because un unless you're cramming the night before the exam, then there's no point in revising because you should have already covered all of your all of your 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 course material. So if you relax, then you can get yourself in a better mental state. You can stop yourself from constantly worrying about the exam. So I would relax. Yeah, that's the one um, Kevin Acker, he's uh, linked to it. 
Um, is it wise to revise through three, three science lessons? Um, I love three science lessons. Um, for you guys who didn't know, that's, um, that's a YouTube channel. Um, and he's made videos on pretty much every bit of the spec from biology to chemistry and physics. Um, but what I would say is that his videos combine all the different specifications. So you might not get very specific information, but for some people, watching a video is very comforting. Obviously, that is also quite a passive method. So I wouldn't rely on three clients lessons entirely. No. But um, I loved it for a way to gain a simple understanding about the topic, yeah. Any more questions uh, from anyone? Um, okay. If, if you don't have any more questions, then that's great. Oh, okay, here we go. Where would you suggest I can go for math practice questions? Um, for higher level math practice questions, I've used um, physicsandmathtutor.com. Um, which was recommended by my teacher. Um, some people also use my math, um, but that's often paid for by the school, but there are some resources which you can access. YouTube channels for which subject? Um, Okay, um, languages, I don't use any website. I just go through the vocab and the grammar um, from the textbook and from the spec. Um, math, as I said, I've used physics and math tutor. I've gone on CES, um, I've used my math. For the sciences, as Asa mentioned, free science lessons is amazing. Also the um, CGP textbook, um, they summarize things and quite um, a concise way and they used to have uh, practice questions at the end so don't rely on that solely and don't go you know, to the point where you just read that but that's been extremely effective for me as well um, in general um, if you have more sources from which you get your information then you cover all of your bases so um, I guess you can also do your own research on that Excellent. Thank you so much, Ash. This was really very helpful. And I can see a lot of people have asked questions. So I can see a lot of engagement happening. And for people who joined late, uh, Risha and Khushi, we have recorded this session and we will make it available on the website. So give us a day or two. So it would be there. And I think this would this particular session would immensely benefit everybody and hence we will make it available on the website. Okay, that's great. Um, good to help people. Um, I hope it was, okay. Anchovies, okay. Let's end the meeting. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Ange, and thank you everyone. And you. please look out for the next session. This, these sessions, they are a great example of community spirit. Children like Ange and Parmeet and uh, Andrew taking time out and helping younger children in the community. This is a very, very noble gesture. So please uh, visit the website. There are a few more sessions coming up. And please, please enroll yourself, RSVP, and make the most of it. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Ange. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Not an issue. It's a pleasure, Ansh. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ansh. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Uh, see you guys soon for another expert time. Okay.